So he really is enamored with him. He thinks too much of that. Yeah, we'll see where it goes. It's kind of good. Yeah, it's and I think you can decide how to get to the point where all of everything in the second and what we I don't foresee like a 30th of why not that I can't go into the late, but I do they actually still must have been I got a text from Jerry this morning and stuff that's not easy. Yeah, it just doesn't make sense. Yeah, Oh, Jerry's off. Good. Oh, it's good. He's not calling me. Video, my screen. Oh, didn't you get a chance to? Right around the corner, but not really. But we did something the last Generate some heat, maybe. Yeah, you got a shared one. I would assume they would have been available for. Sweden, considering yeah, the circumstances. Um, even so, uh, no matter. Good morning meeting. Yeah. <laughs> Sunshine. Yes. But it's below zero. Dave, well, uh, Mr. Beats, I said I wished for the sun. Well, uh, you can have it back now. <laughs> this is what we get when we ask for the sun. That's great. I see hell moved in here. There you are. Right. Must be something going on here. Call the meeting. Would like to proceed. No changes, Madam President. Move to approve as presented. Second. Commissioners, in your packet was sent out on Friday a draft of the lease arrangement that we have prepared with uh, Andy Scatfold and the 99 bottles um, with 99 bottles and Kier Beerston uh, LLC. They were the one proposal that came in for the Rose Creek uh, clubhouse restaurant, um, which we would be wanting to discuss today so that they would have the opportunity to make some improvements in the facility and open uh, as golf season opens the um, sometime in April. I don't know what date yet. Um, we're hoping for sunny skies. And, um, and in that lease arrangement, what we were able to put together with negotiations is a proposal for providing um, a restaurant, bar, and beverage service for uh, Rose Creek Golf Course during the golf season only, which would be approximately April 1st through the end of October. Um, again, the arrangements are in there so that in April and October, the opportunity is to modify the hours and to modify some of the services because as we know, we may not open April 1 and that sometimes the weather might be really great for a week and then after that, it gets really difficult for us to um, offer golf services because of snow or cold temperatures or whatever weather we might have. Um, 
At this point, they would not be providing winter hours. Um, the rent proposed is 12% of gross for the first two years. And then after that, there is a step um, increase if their sales are above 500,001 for 15%, and then anything above 750,001 cent at 18%. Um, we would be owning and the equipment that is in the property and taking care of that. They would be making um, um, payment on minor uh, improvements. Uh, they are responsible for any paint um, and improvements in the kiosk, which are listed on uh, one of the exhibits, which right now that's the only thing that they are proposing that they would make improvements on. And uh, that is the one space in the building that has not been improved on since we owned the property. Uh, they are also looking at proposing um, that they would take care of expenses uh, $500, $500 or less, things like uh, cleaning the uh, re restaurant area, taking care of uh, minor replacement of equipment. They're also looking at taking care of the dishwasher and the um, maybe adding an ice machine. They, um, the park district would be taking care of the costs, including utilities, maintenance, repair, and replacement of the equipment in the building for any larger expenses. Um, and so with that, we would open it up for any questions or discussion that you would like to have. I'd like to ask, um, pardon me? What is the history of the of the business? Um, they are here, so <laughs> why don't we ask them to answer that question for us? Uh, if you want to come up to the front there. Is that all? Do you just want to start singing as soon as you hear it or? No. I don't know. <laughs> start the, the youngest youngest drinking song i ever learned that's I what guess. i'm saying i mean the history is 98 bottles of beer in the law, 98 oh, bottles. joe starts with 98. well i was already 99 <laughs> for dollars right. singing in his head the whole time yeah well, i am um count down it could be a longer meeting if we sing it would be a long day if we keep on going um <laughs> Thank you for uh, letting me uh, come today and speak to the board. Uh, my name is Andy Scatfold. Um, I'm my wife and myself operate 99 Bottles. We uh, started 99 Bottles about 12 years ago. Uh, we had prior uh, liquor stores uh, prior to that, um, but uh, 99 has been kind of our baby over the last 12 years. We expanded uh, into the golf courses in Moorhead. We operate the Meadows in the Village Green Golf Course currently. Um, it's a unique uh, business to operate with golf courses, as you guys probably know, um, with uh, prior um, golf courses in town. Um, it works really well for our business where we slow down in the summertime and uh, then we can uh, get busy on golf courses. And then when it speeds up for us in uh, the retail store, um, it's a great spot for us to kind of um, alternate our staffing. Um, but more importantly, we have staff that's super enthusiastic. We have uh, sommeliers on staff. We have uh, restaurant uh, managers and supervisors that have great experience and, and backgrounds. And we're just uh, thrilled to keep on adding into the restaurant business. And it's a good alternative for what we uh, do at the retail stores. So you you have restaurants now? We, we currently run the uh, Village Green and the Meadows Golf Course as restaurants, yes. What sort of food do you serve? Well, over there, we're a little bit limited because of the space um, that's there, um, but we do full catering for tournaments, and um, but it's, it's a lot of golf course fare, so it's some areas are set up for just grab and go sandwiches. We have uh, hot food, you know, the, the typical hot dogs and, and hamburgers, but we keep on adding additional items in there with hot sandwiches and we do uh, quesadillas and those type of things. And uh, with this opportunity, we can really let uh, the, the food guys do their thing that they do best. And uh, we just haven't had uh, full facilities to be able to make all of those offerings. So um, we submitted uh, as part of our application um, some sample uh, menu items and 
and I think we'll continue to add um, on to uh, those menu items. In fact, the, the guys have been doing test kitchen stuff for the last three weeks, and I think there's some great, great product coming, uh, coming your way. I don't suppose there's an off sale. Not over there. There it is in Moorhead. Yeah, <laughs> we don't we don't own an off sale in North Dakota yet. Andy, do you expect to do charitable gaming? We don't. That's um, okay. it hasn't been on our radar. Um, I guess we're not uh, opposed to it. We just don't have any plans for that yet. Got it. I didn't. That's the only question I had of you, but sure. I have other questions. But Here. you you can probably sit down if you want, or well, or stay up there. Either way, don't feel like you have gonna, to. I was just going to ask you a quick question. So you you guys are in the restaurant business. You all pay attention to each other. Um, so when you decided that this was something you wanted, I mean, this is just a personal question, but you guys wanted to venture into what what visions did you have for how this is going to work for you guys as opposed to maybe it hasn't worked out the best in the last couple of years so restaurants have been a very tough business the last handful of years um we've been lucky and very thankful for the restaurants that we have owned where um during covid we had very small overhead and we weren't having to carry a full restaurant staff um, and then more importantly, golf was one of the few things people did over the COVID years and mm -hmm. it, we actually thrived really well during that time where a lot of restaurants were just kind of closed. Um, so it worked out fairly well for us, but this opportunity allows us to kind of step up the game um, for uh, the amount of offerings um, that we can offer um, through a you know a larger scale restaurant. Um, it's perfectly time for that. I think we're all looking past COVID now um, and we want to move forward. Um, but having a seasonal restaurant makes the restaurant business that much harder. And with having our retail store, we can offer full time employment to all of our managers and our employees and they can come in work in the retail environment during the off season where you can't really have that alternative if you're just running straight restaurants sure. and it makes restaurants incredibly hard to staff for just part time and get halfway decent employees. It's a really tough challenge and I think we've we've solved that and um, it's worked wonderfully for the last three years in Moorhead and we uh, hope to keep on expanding uh, the North Dakota side. That was going to be kind of a question I was going to have too is do you think this will help you from a staffing perspective have three three golf course locations to kind of schedule people, schedule staff? It, it does. Um, it, more importantly to cover our general manager and our managers where we can have that extra volume to keep on increasing wages uh, for them and and more importantly retaining them so they don't go somewhere else where you know last couple of years it's come out of our pocket to self-fund those those um, good people in place now I think we have the volume to be able to start uh, leveling that out a little bit so it, it really does help us by adding this volume anyone else Thank you. Yep, thank thank you. you. So I have I have a question of, of clarification about uh, item one four and fifteen point one. So page two and page eleven, if you numbered your pages. Um, so one point four says the lease shall include personal pro landlord's personal property to include all current kitchen equipment, tables, chairs, flatware, glassware, and silverware owned by the landlord. Landlord shall be responsible for maintaining, repairing, and replacing such items as provided in paragraph 15. And so then in paragraph 15, it says, well, it talks about repair and maintenance, but then specifically in 15.1, it talks about tenants' rent payment does not contemplate landlord's responsibility to provide any janitorial service or nominal maintenance and or repairs which cost less than $500 within the leased premises. I'm wondering, does that cover this 1.4 or is there something else that refers to 1.4 well not everything 15.3 oh, i'm sorry go to 15.3 no. 
tenant and landlord shall work together in good faith to set forth an annual maintenance and replacement plan for landlord's personal property and equipment as outlined in 1.4 and 1.4 exhibit. So my question is, dishes break, glasses break, things break. This reads to me as if we're going to replace dishes every year, glasses every year, just as regular use. Again, the intent of the arrangement is that what's on that list of assets are the things that we currently know that we own. Um, some of those items may be things that our tenant does not want and we'll put those away in storage. Um, in our discussions with uh, Andy and, and their group, uh, we've come to the understanding that those things under $500 they'd be willing to invest in and that yes, they have to work um, amongst our regular budgeting so that it's something that we are less surprised. I mean, obviously things break and we have to replace things, but if there is a change in menu or there's some other kind of activity that they really want to do, they need to visit with us. And as the landlord, we get to decide if it's something we want to invest in as well. And so it is a give and take. So we will be buying new dishes every year. Is that what I'm really? reading? I. OK, well, in 14, 1.4 says we're responsible for maintaining, repairing, and replacing such items. And 15.3 says we're going to annually maintain and replace we're going to have an annual maintenance and replacement plan for landlords, personal property and equipment as outlined in Exhibit 1.4, which is this list. So if that's not the intent, then we should clarify that. And maybe Jeff, can you speak to that one of anything less than five hundred dollars is is the leasees. Well, replacement say, request. Once again, it'd go back to. Uh, 15.3 in that. Uh, landlord and tenant have to work together in good faith to set an annual maintenance and replacement plan. And so we have discretion to say, you know, we're not replacing dishes and and cups and everything else in which then the tenant would have to say, well, either I'm making do with what I have or I'm paying to replace them myself. And so that's where I think we'd still have final say and final authority is that we have a budget that we have to approve in September of every year, which will include, you know, some sort of, I'm sure, escrow or uh, maintenance plan as it relates to Rose Creek. And they might come to us for certain things and we'll either have to say, yeah, it's within our budget or no, it's not, or they have to prioritize what would fall into that and what won't fall into it. Um, which I suppose if we have a, a, an annual budget of $5,000 or whatever for replacement and there's nothing on tap and they want new plates or bowls or cups that they could request it and we could consider it. So if Andy's intent is not to come to us and say, hey, we broke 12 glasses last year or three shot glasses are lit missing because somebody stuck them in their pocket and he's comfortable with it, it seems, why don't we just put why don't we just clarify it in 15.3 rather than having to work together in good faith and create some kind of. I mean, I, I, if we lay it out ahead of time and everybody's in agreement, doesn't it seem to be a lot easier than hoping that everybody agrees later? Um, you know, the dishes were an easy one for me to grab just because you know that dishes are going to get lo get lost or broken or things like that, but you know, the televisions, that was another thing. I mean, they're only gonna have a certain lifespan. Do we wanna be in the business of buying televisions? And um, and then you mentioned if they don't use something, we're gonna put it in storage. So then the question is, can we get rid of things because they're now on this list? So if they're on this list and it's in our lease and we get rid of it, do we need to then buy it? They decide they want it later. Oh, uh, we're not using this, but now we want it. Now I'm just asking on the front end so we know we have our bases covered. And those are all very good questions. Again, this is put together in the best that we know of at this point. Based on the uh, tenant leases that we've had at Edgewood, um, it has been working very well as a partnership 
that the conversation happens on a regular basis and then there have been things that at Edgewood Tavern they've requested and as the owner we've said no it's not in the budget right now and they've then decided to either do different programming or figure out how to fund it elsewhere. Um, and so I look at it very much as a good faith partnership. That's what we advertised that we wanted was a partnership that we weren't wanting to just have a tenant that would do their own thing and not partner with us with the golf. And and uh, from our interviews with Andy and his staff, we feel that at this point he and Matt with the golf Pro Shop would be able to work together successfully to do a really great golf operation that will enhance the golf service that we provide. So if I so if I'm looking at it to exhibit one four is the asset list, right? We're basically saying here's all the assets in the building. They can use them if they want. Now, if they say we don't like these, we don't like these glasses or these plates, more than likely they're going to probably buy their own plates. Like, but we're saying you can use these. This comes included. You can use them if you want or if you don't want. I mean, it's not very common that a, a tenant in a restaurant space is going to go to their landlord and say, we need dishes and we need dish racks and, you know, silverware and all that stuff. That's almost always going to be on the tenant, the tenant side. And this list was also provided to all of those that toured ahead of time before proposals were asked for. Because again, in good faith, we wanted to let people know what we owned and what they would have use of. Right. Well, and I don't have a problem with, I mean, if we have these dishes, we have no use for dishes. We have no use for stem glasses. We have no use for all this stuff. I have no problem with them using all these things, but I don't want to keep replenishing things like that, that we don't have a use for otherwise. So in my mind, it was, yeah, if we, if we have all this stuff, why wouldn't they use it if they want? And then when it's gone, it's gone was where kind of my brain was going with with use up the assets when they're gone there. It's on the tenant. Well, as Aaron was saying, it's kind of assumed that those things would be in place for a new tenant. Uh, <laughs> what is the length of the lease? It's five years with the opportunity to re renew for two additional five year terms. OK. So you haven't had any problems with this kind of a policy in the past in other locations? This is um, very much a turnkey operation and a seven month operation, which is different than what we've done at Edgewood. Um, also different than what we did prior with Biggers and Legends. Um, but again, when we were working with uh, Divots and Mark Melby, we had very similar arrangement with the equipment that was up there. So is there any, this is just general information for me. Mm -hmm. Is there any uh, a prediction as to a percentage of how much damage there is, per, say, for plates and glasses? I don't have that information. I, I don't know if Andy, with his previous um, operations, would have any idea of what average breakage is for dishes. I know th that we don't have a lot of dishes, so he's going to have to supplement that anyway. Thank you. So do we have a budget for Edgewood for the operation up there, the, an annual replacement budget? We have a uh, annual budget for capital improvements, repair facilities um, and mobile as as needed. And it's a general um, for the clubhouse and for the golf and the restaurant operations. So yes, we do. Well, the reason I so what do we question. what's our annual spend on restaurant operations do you know i would have to look that up um i know that when we put together the estimate for rose creek it was ninety six thousand dollars i don't know that we did a comparison at edgewood um, again edgewood is a smaller building and it has a different footprint that we operate did you say the operational cost for rose creek the building is ninety six thousand that was for utilities and property taxes, everything put together that we've um, been aware of for the last year or average of years, depending upon what we had access to. Insurance? Yeah, insurance. Part of that? So those are our annual operating costs for Rose Creek. Yeah, if we were, I'm, I, if we were paying 100% of everything to keep it yep. functional for 12 months, that's our estimate. 
So then most likely the breakage is going to be something min minuscule by comparison. Yes, we would anticipate that again, our tenant would take good care of the property. I I just we're we're splitting hairs over cups and plates and those are easy things to break. I think the, the point is the question is that Vicky's saying is is whether or not we want to we want to invest in the you know as things wear out for she brought up the TV for example like <clears throat> they can replace the TV or are we going to replace the TV I mean, that to me is a really good question because the TV is going to wear out in a in a period of time and you know, I honestly don't know what the right answer is because if for some reason the relationship goes away, I don't want them going around going, that's ours, remove, leave that one, you know, or where we're ending up having to buy um, things from somebody anyway. So, so that I think really is the question because when we start talking about cups and plates, well, those things easily break and it's trivial uh, what one plate costs, whatever. But I think overall conceptually, that's the question. So what's the answer to that question? What is the, what does this lease currently say that are we going to replace things like I'm going to use the TV instead when that goes out or are they going to? And I'm just curious what that answer is. If it's ATV, TVs could be less than $500. And so our tenant would be responsible for that. Okay. So just to clarify, it doesn't say in 15.3 anything about things less than $500. Under maintenance repairs in 15.1, it talks about less than $500. So I don't know if you need to add something to 15.3 to say, you know, I don't even care if you say kitchen equipment or if you say, kit, you know, assets, equipment 1.4 assets greater than $500 in cost. I mean, you could go buy a $200 TV or you can buy a $700 TV. You're going to end up with a similar TV. But, but at, at least you got a dollar amount you're working with. In 15.3, you don't have a dollar amount at all. Yeah, I'd agree. I think... Uh personal property and equipment is different than nominal maintenance and repairs. Right. And we did discuss this during the interview process at length, very similar to what we're discussing here. And, and really, I think the intent in a nutshell to get to Vicki and Joe's uh, question is anything over $500 we would agree that we would resupply in a conversation with them about what's needed with the intention being this is a turnkey operation now and in the future um, and part of the offset for that is the uh, percentage we're getting of gross sales which as we've run through the numbers and worked with them in the presentation we feel um, is enough to offset any of those things. One of the things that Luke and I have discussed as we go forward, if 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 this becomes the partnership and it gets approved, um, it's a little bit to, to Jerry's question. You know, maybe what we want to do is, as part of that 12% of sales, have a set aside for these types of things annually, so that it doesn't have to be embedded solely into our existing equipment repair maintenance budget. It can be part of the operations here because I think. One of the differences here than than what we've seen in the past is um, we as the landlord are responsible for all costs. And as an offset to those costs, we get 12% of sales and then it ratchets it up as they are more successful. And part of the goal there is that we want to help them be successful. We want to create a partnership where we don't provide barriers to success because of overhead. And we will make that up um, as a share of profits as they go forward. So really I see it as anything over $500 and it doesn't mean Andy gets to say, I want this, this, and this, and it's 501 and above and you must do it. Correct. It is, let's have a conversation about what it is, but we're really making the investment in a turnkey operation now and going forward. Yeah, that was, a, that was I was just gonna say in 15-1, that's the way I interpret that is that if it's, if it's under $500, we're not even, they're not coming to us, but if it's over 500, then they would, potentially come to us and then we open up that discussion and more than likely TVs probably wouldn't be included and you know in the, in the way I'm reading this this is going to be more structural building things or more than likely kitchen equipment or things like that right that are going to be very kind of important to the operation of the business not something like a TV or a marketing POS or things like that if there's a major issue with the 
draft system or a refrigeration unit or something like that. To me, that would trigger that, right? And then it becomes a discussion of maybe, well, then, maybe we put all the cost and then spread it out back into, you know, rent somehow, or we split the cost or we. And I understand. I mean, that was why we agreed to buy the, the all these items, because we knew we needed to help somebody get in there, get going without all the upfront investment. Makes perfect sense to me. It again, 15.1 has to do with maintenance and repairs. It doesn't have to do with the personal property. 15.3 is what addresses the personal property of the park district. And that piece, that 15.3 does not indicate a dollar amount. So I think we need to add that in there if that's what our intention is. Is that something, Jeff, that could be added? And Yeah, we can certainly add that. I'd just say then the, the only difficulty becomes at the end of a term, we're now trying to figure out whose cups are whose and whose plates are whose or whose TVs are whose because if we're relying on the tenant to replace and buy these things, it become their property uh, for them. Generally speaking, it'd be their property for them to take out with them. Um, so again, I guess the way I just conceptualized this was, you know, that we as the landlord are going to have a budget of maintenance and repairs. If part of that goes towards plates and cups or whatever, that, that could be fine. We would then own them or TVs or kitchen uh, equipment replacement. But if they need those things and it's not within our uh, budget that we are going to mutually agree on, then they'd have two options, either go, one, go without them or be replacing themselves and it would be theirs. And so, I mean, we can put a dollar amount in or the tenant in my mind is going to, he, he's going to have to pick and choose certain things because in a given year, we're not going to potentially be able to replace everything on his list, for example. And, and I'm okay with it not being a, in, I mean, what I'm saying is it's not in there now. And people are alluding to say that it, it is in there and it's not in there. There's nothing in there about $500 for the personal property. That's just maintenance and repairs up above. Um, the last question I had, and I'm assuming this would be an insurance claim kind of thing. This would get covered that way. But at the ver on the very last line of 15.3, it says that is caused by the negligent or intentional acts of the tenant. You know, they go in and they trash the place. I don't expect that to happen, Andy. But <laughs> the question I have is about a customer. So a customer goes and is a customer of the the tenant and they decide to have a problem. There's a fight. There's who knows what. Somebody gets mad. They throw crap. They break TVs, whatever. Then whose issue is that? And is that a, maybe it's addressed somewhere else. I'm assuming we'd file a claim. They'd file a claim. But. Does that have to be indicated here? Jeff, correct me if I'm wrong. Are those types of things with uh, property damage and personal liability covered in nine? So nine, nine point one. The whole section nine is about insurance. Um, and I believe, as I had read through this, and this is pretty standard language with what would happen in a landlord tenant situation, but I'll yield to your expertise on that. Well, one of the things um, in reference to this long discussion is that it is a turnkey operation at this point, and I'm assuming that everything is in good stead, that it's a, a good place to be moving into if you're a tenant and that we want to make sure that, that that status remains so that if there is something going goes wrong with the lease or your next tenant, that you're going to still have that turnkey operation that's going to be attractive to a future tenant. So I just think that if, if we're nickel-diming everything, you know, there'd be probably more of a tendency for things to begin to dissolve or disintegrate in terms of quality. So I just think that it's the park district's responsibility to make sure things are kept in good stead. That's all the questions I had. Okay, so um, do we want to make a motion? I do have a, I've got a question. 
Oh, go ahead, Jerry. Explain how the banquet space is going to work. At this point, what we have agreed upon is that um, the spaces that Andy's responsible for are the kitchen, the kiosk, and the storage areas that he needs for his equipment area. And the park district would maintain the banquet space um, for cleaning purposes as well. And we also had had some discussions with the city that that may help us with property taxes. And so based on that, we our intent is that the park district as the owner of that banquet space would basically have a facility use agreement with Andy for the use of that when Andy is in operation, primarily for the use of golf tournaments and anything relative to the golf business. And is that exclusive, exclusive catering? Their he has, based on this uh, arrangement, he has exclusive food and beverage in that space. Got it. Unless he decides right. he can't or they don't want to or yeah. whatever. Okay. And if he would have a desire to use that space for graduation party or something else during the time of this lease, then he would reach out to us. We would set up an arrangement and the um, fee for that would basically be included with the 12% that he makes on the operation that he does in there for the reservation. Yeah. So my question is on the so termination on their side. Let's say they give it a try this year and decide they don't like it. They're just, I mean, because it's technically kind of a five-year term, but there's really no term if you think about it like that, right? There's no Nothing on the hook if they get one year in and say never mind. Because if she makes zero dollars, we don't get anything. Mm. Sure. Well, we'd be able to, you know, two things. One, we'd have an obligation to find a new tenant. And then you're correct to the extent that we find a new tenant on less favorable terms, we could sue th these guys for breach of contract. Uh, but you're right, it's it's a more difficult claim for what our monetary damages are. The one thing that we'd have is we'd have at least historical sales from 2023 to say, here's what they likely would have paid in rent in 2024, 25, 26, 27. And here's what we're getting in rent and it's less, um, but it's a lot harder of a claim than, than a set dollar amount. And so it is a lot tougher to prove, correct? Sure, okay. Anyone else? Is there a minimum rent at Edgewood? Edgewood? No, it is set up as a percentage only. Mm -hmm. And we talked about the distinction between minimum rent versus mandatory hours being open. And um, what was settled on was uh, the tenant agreed to mandatory op hours of operation, both for the bar restaurant uh, the kiosks area, area and for golf carts, which, you know, in our mind, it's, you know, it's not a mandatory minimum dollar amount, but if you're agreeing to be open this number of hours, you're probably going to hit whatever mandatory minimum that we would have put in. Um, and the minimum number probably would have been low anyway. So again, go back to our, our need is to provide service okay. to the golfers. Andy, I, I, Take this back. I do have another question for you and you don't have to get up. I think it should be a pretty easy question. So I was looking at the hours of operation. Are these similar to what you do in Moorhead? OK. Because I noticed like the middle of the summer, the golf cart stopped going around at 8 p.m. Um, you know, it's based on things like that. Do you, you know what? I'm sorry. You yeah, probably need a microphone because Jerry's on. Jerry needs to hear. Yep. Sorry. Thank you. So the question on the hours, those are the minimum hours that we're going to operate. It's not Seven. what we most likely will do, but those are the minimum set. Um, we do stay open later in the summertime, sometimes past eight o'clock. It's really course sensitive. It's weather sensitive. It depends on what's going on. Um, but in our negotiations, this was just the minimum set that we're willing to staff and be open. You know, one of the challenges of the Rose Creek 
environment is you have three different areas that you need to staff and you need to staff with a lot of people and you have a full kitchen. Um, it's a, it's quite a large operation for for staffing and it's a really huge expense to, to do that, especially when there's not very many people out on the course. Um, so we agree to do that as a minimum, but just keep in mind it's only a minimum, not what actually can happen in the summertime. Hopefully if it's busy and people stay till midnight, we're fine with that. Um, and that does happen um, from time to time. So, um, you know, just, just because it's a minimum doesn't mean that's all yeah. we're gonna do. Well, and I was just more curious if this is similar to what you were doing in Moorhead and if this is- It's very, what, very, very what close to- What you see as the solid hours and sometimes you get some bonus time. I would say it's very, very close to what we do in Moorhead. Um, what we've come to see, and I'm sure you guys see at your other courses, is that the mornings are are pretty um, pretty quiet over on the golf courses, other than a few people um, taking some early rounds, well, but uh, we'll they don't something. really okay. participate in the restaurants. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Mm, anyone else? Would someone like to make a motion? Say I have to. I'm going to abstain on abstain. any. Yeah, I haven't. I'll have to. Not have to, but should. Well, I we I move that we. Uh, do I have a, the wording here? Motion to approve the lease for the restaurant at Rose Creek Public Golf Course as presented. Second. Further discussion. Dave, do you pull the board here? Commissioner Dawson? Aye. Commissioner Deutsch? Aye. Commissioner Rosted? Yes. Commissioner Morgan? Aye. With Commissioner Hill abstaining. Yes. <clears throat> Motion passed. Uh, unless there's something else, we'll adjourn the meeting. Move to adjourn. All right. Thank you. Yeah, Bye. Bye.